Hi, Gene Montrostelli here, the editor of TappingQA.com. The video that you are about to watch is a conversation that was a part of this year's 24 Hours of Tapping. The 24 Hours of Tapping is a fundraiser for the amazing work that is done by the Peaceful Heart Network. The Peaceful Heart Network has brought tapping to migrants, refugees, prisoners, and the underprivileged in over 30 countries all over the world. As you watch this video, if you learn something, if you were touched by it, if you were inspired by it, the easiest way to say thank you is to support the work of the Peaceful Heart Network. To do that, all you need to do is go to 24hoursoftapping.com slash support. And as you look in the description and the first comment down below, you will see a direct link to that. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Our next speaker is Dr. Stephen Daniels. Stephen Daniels was the fifth person to ever be trained in voice technology by the world-renowned Roger Callahan. For those of you who don't know, Roger Callahan came up with thought field therapy. He is the one that Gary Craig trained with, who ended up developing EFT, which we are based on. Dr. Daniels is a certified presenter on the emotional, uh, a conference presenter on the emotional freedom technique for the tapping solution on chronic illness. He is also an advanced level trained in allergy elimination techniques and level three trained in the total body modification. Um, the way that I like to describe Stephen Daniels is this is who I want to be when I grow up. Um, he does some of the most provocative work in the world. Um, and so we got to have an opportunity to have a conversation about what he calls remote remote and self-testing, you might know it as muscle testing. Here's my conversation with Stephen Daniel. If it would be useful for us as we start this conversation, um, and I, I'm aware of this just because, you know, I've been aware of your work for over 15 years and I'm a huge fan. For the way that you approach things with quantum techniques, how is that different from what most folks who've been introduced to tapping or a transformational method like tapping, how is the work that you are doing is different, which I think will then create a springboard into us talking about the topic at large? We've learned how to use remote muscle testing mm -hmm. to create a more specific field. Okay. In other words, what the body can see, it can heal. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what questions to ask and have a way of getting information other than just the healer's intuition. Right. Now, what I'm going to share today, I think, is the number one way of build, building any healer's intuition there's ever been. Mm -hmm. And we're going to offer that as a free download. Yep. And so then, so so now we're in a circumstance. So, so the jumping off point is it's not about what the client is reporting because we are notoriously bad eyewitnesses to our own experience that I can give you a very coherent reason as to why I am the way that I am that could be wrong. We are stepping away from what I am just getting as a practitioner from my experience, my expertise, and just what's coming to me in the moment. And instead, what it sounds like we're doing is we're using just a really particular framework to start asking questions to figure out which directions we go as a practitioner or when we're tapping on our own, because the better roadmap we have, the less time we're, yeah, I guess, fumbling around in the dark to figure out, because you know, for most of us, when we were taught tapping, we're taught the idea is the more specific you are, the easier it is to create transformation. And so then your approach is just giving us the ability to get specific in a slightly different way. In a very important way that the client may have no conscious knowledge about, right. whether that's physical or non-physical. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you can reveal more, and then that's what this whole remote muscle testing is. If you can reveal hidden information from the body's wisdom for the healing field, you're going to be more effective. It's kind of like what what you do from your intuition is much more specific than somebody who just started yesterday. Right. Because they don't, they don't have an intuition. What if you can even go deeper than that in just a few short minutes and get a very specific field that might be different for this client than anyone else? Yeah. 
And, and, and as you say that, like, like the analogy that immediately comes to my mind is it's the difference between having the wisdom of experience of working with a skilled physician and then adding the information of a blood test where all of a sudden we're getting stuff that we can't see visibly that we're not going to know in just through our experience, but we're getting really direct specific information about what's happening inside of the body, which immediately transforms the course of treatment. If we're in a circumstance where we're doing the exact same thing with the emotional things that we've experienced in the past, the trauma, the stories that we're carrying, all of a sudden we are much more skilled at being able to clear stuff faster. I would say it's kind of like my knee hurts. Okay. Uh -huh. Is an MRI helpful? Mm -hmm. That level of an MRI information on my knee injury, does that guide our treatment differently than, well, let's just stay off it for a week and ice it and do physical therapy. Well, right. what if we do an MRI and listen, I've got a term, torn meniscus. Well, I'm going to approach it differently because I have no information. Right. And so for those who are, are joining us and are unfamiliar with the term, what do you mean by muscle testing and what do you mean by remote muscle testing? Okay. Well, muscle testing comes from applied kinesiology. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I was the fifth person ever trained by Dr. Roger Callahan in uh, voice technology. Okay. So I paid $100,000 for what I learned in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. All of that plus a whole lot more is in this product we're giving to your group called mm -hmm. Truth Techniques. Yep. It's two and a half hours long. It teaches you 22 ways of self-testing which is how you do remote muscle testing. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's basically a diagnostic tool that you can aim at anything physically or non-physically. And so then from my recollection of that, because I, I did a, a version of that particular tooth training, I don't know if it's the same training or not, but the one that has you and, and Dr. Bob Austin in it, mm -hmm. in which the questions that we're doing in that particular scenario, they're digital questions. Like we are, we're not just asking questions of the body. We have to be asking questions in a yes, no way that then mm -hmm. gives us the ability to be able to get that information. Um you know, from, from you all, the, the, the one that I use that I picked up with is I really like the, the turning of the wrist, like as one of, and so for me, based off of the training that we did is like, if I'm asking a digital question for me, as I turn my wrist, if it gets caught up, then that's my system telling me a no. And if it turns freely all the way across, that's giving me a yes. And so what we're doing is we're recognizing that when we're able to ask these questions, it gives us insight into where we want to be targeting and working in that particular way. Is that correct? That's correct. And I would say that was our, our point 0.1 version. Now we're about point 0.10. So awesome. But it's still basically the same thing. You're going to get... Yeah. What, and it, it's like if you focus on somebody's <clears throat> field, if, if a yes answer is a strong response, and I use that same one, a yep. no answer locks up, then you're starting to able to dialogue with the body's intelligence at a deeper level than the client's conscious knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I, I will give lots of physical and non-physical examples of that in our discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that would be just kind of a, a great jumping off point. People are going, okay, I have the ability to ask these yes, no questions. What are the types of questions that I can be asking that are most useful when I'm trying to figure something out? Well, don't try to predict the next lottery ticket. <laughs> okay. So the body's got to have some wisdom about this, right? Yeah. So um, let's put it this way. Um, you can ask anything, but there's something that is important, and I call it creating the field. Okay. And again, I ask yes or no. And we've got lots of charts. Those are going to be free in this uh, Truth Techniques one download. But one of the things I ask is, do I have, I call it spokes. <clears throat> do I have 100% all, all the known and unknown organs communicating mm -hmm. in this field? I mean, we want... We want all the data we can get. And if I know, well, we teach a way to put that online. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, okay. So again, let's just shoot that example. Somebody comes to me, they're going through a divorce. They have depression. Mm -hmm. 
I need to know, is it physical, non-physical, or both? Now, typically, if the intensity of the reaction to the trauma does not fit the level of trauma, it's resonating with something else. Mm -hmm. Earlier traumas, if you be, you know, this lifetime, past lifetimes. So just as an example, a guy comes in for depression, prolonged depression through divorce. He feels like he's depressed. Okay. So I ask, what are the origins of this depression? Is it current day? No. Oh, he's 50 years old. His wife left him. Well, at 18, his girlfriend left him. At two and a half, his mom left the family. Oh, so I ask. Now I can muscle test. What's the emotion? Is it depression? No. Oh, what is it? It's rage, abandonment, grief, fear, terror. Oh, having that information, writing it down. There's another key emotion. Yes, resentment, unforgiveness. I'm, I'm talking about the non-physical. Then I go yep. to beliefs. What are the beliefs? And I, I know I'm, on, I'm across these three traumas. What are the beliefs about myself? I'm unlovable. I'm a failure. Oh, okay. What's a belief about others? Women are not trustworthy. Women will abandon you. What's the third belief? The world is not a safe and loving place. These are just muscle. These are charts that we use. Okay. Yep. And then I ask, do I have a vow? Yes. Never be abandoned again. Okay. Well, that's pretty significant. If you ever want to have a relationship, is there agreement? Yes. You know, hold my anger to protect myself. Well, if I stay angry at women, guess what? And I, I don't want to be hurt again. Then I'm, I'm pretty much doomed to isolation with the anger and rage. That's an example of creating the non-physical field, if that's all I'm doing. And then tapping and letting my client know, listen, we're dealing with this mom abandonment, your 18-year-old girlfriend abandonment, this abandonment. Here's the emotions. Here's the beliefs. Here's a vow you might have taken. And then you tap on that. So it's it's like if I if I look at um, if I look at a, a brand new tapper, it's like they got a shotgun, they're hunting everything with a shotgun. That could be a yep. hummingbird, that could be an elephant, that could be a lion, that could be a bird. If you know how to create the field, then you have a whole arsenal. You've got a BB gun, you got a 22, you got a Alpha gun, you got a shotgun, but it gives you an ability to target in what's what's the best tool, but I have to know my target. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back. You know, 95% of my clients have chronic health issues. So if you put the word chronic in front of anything, that means there's hidden fields. Mm, yeah. So if somebody's depressed, just for an example, and we teach how to do this, I'm looking, and, and I, besides being a clinical psychologist, I was a psychopharmacologist. So a little more knowledgeable than most. So if I were to say, for example, serotonin, serotonin want to be healthy, and that's weak, they probably need some l or, you know, if you want to use pharmaceuticals, that's okay. 90% of the time, those are fine. If I say, you know, serotonin, serotonin will be healthy, serotonin won't be sick, the same thing with dopamine, those are fine. But if I say functional serotonin, oh, your body's producing neurotransmitters, you don't need drugs, but it's blocked. What's blocking it? Number one is foods. Okay, uh, other toxin fields. You know, and for pain, uh, also anesthesias or bites that never cleared. So if somebody's severely depressed or let's say severely anxious, depression because they have a wheat and, and dairy allergy and anxiety because their laundry soap is toxic, I don't find the tappings very helpful because they're reversed. Mm -hmm. And see, in our testing, as you know, from the old uh, video I did with Bob Austin, 
if you say, I want to be healthy, I want to be sick, and it's not strong and weak, you're reversed. Right. If you're reversed, not tapping, not much is going to work. Medications don't work. Nothing works. Yep. So we got to get you out of that reversal. And dehydration can cause reversal. There's a way to test for that. But more often, you're wearing something like your laundry soap. Or you're in a moldy home. When I get clients like that, I say, hey, don't spend another dime with me. Get out of that house. The mold mm-hmm. level is too high. I, I can't help you heal physically or emotionally living in a moldy house. So it, it's like it just that that ability to muscle test expands your ability beyond just, and I'm not minimizing this, being an emotional healer to helping people with very complex physical issues that are often underlying the emotional field. Okay. Like if you have chronic depression, my mom was bipolar and schizophrenic, medicated out of her mind for years. She had a wheat allergy, a neutral sweet allergy and allergic to oranges. Once I learned this works, she got off those, her migraines went away. She was mentally clear in 24 hours. If she went back on those, she was back in the hospital. Okay. My dad ultimately died of a stroke in a carotid bypass surgery. But what was underneath that, he was misdiagnosed with asthma. So he was on steroids, oral steroids, all his life, which basically destroyed his health. He never had a we he never had a he never had asthma. They actually found this after he retired. Uh, up at a big Denver clinic, he had a wheat allergy. So truth heals, lies do not. If the truth was he had a a cortisol deficiency, then prednisone would have helped. It didn't. It might have maintained him, like with my mom, you know, bipolar and schizophrenia. Well, if that was a real issue, medications would have helped, but they never did. So if something's not healing, you're missing something with truth. And the truth techniques can help you find that. And and so and what what I love about this is to just go back to some of the, the like the earlier examples we were using before we got into the physiological, the non-physical, the questions of is it a vow? What do I believe about relationships? What are these memories, these sorts of things? All of those things for those of us who are tappers, all of that stuff resonates and we know to ask those sorts of questions. The thing that I love about what you're talking about here is twofold. Number one is you know, we're not relying on the client as being a reliable eyewitness to what's going on because we don't necessarily remember all of that. But number two, what you're talking about is a really systematic approach where, you know, where it's like thinking about all of these things because any practitioner worth their salt. If you said, great, I want you to think down and I want you to categorize the types of issues that your clients has. I've done exercises like this just to be more skilled and looking at lists of emotions and types of vows and types of relationships and stuff like that, you know, and we know to think about those things. But when we have a framework, it's much more like a a pre-flight checklist, even though this skill pilot's using, they still look at every single gauge before they step in to get as much information as possible. By having a framework like you're talking about, not only getting access to the information, but I am less likely as a practitioner to forget something to, you know, like as a practitioner, I have biases. Like there's certain issues that I like working on or I assume are going to be there in that sort of stuff. And like you said, just because the client might think it's the issue and I might think it's the issue. If it's not the issue, it doesn't matter what tool set that we're using because we're going after the wrong thing. And so, you know, folks who have been tapping for a while, all of the things that you're talking about, particularly the non-physical stuff, are things that we're aware of. But by having a framework, it makes it easier for us to hit all of the nodes so we're not skipping something in that process. Yes, I call myself a recovering psychologist. I'm a student of consciousness and spirituality. Yep. And that the whole journey there, and there's a great, great people I've studied under, is consciously or unconsciously, we lie to ourselves to keep ourselves in a place of comfort. Mm-hmm. Over time, that doesn't work out well, right? Yeah. So, so if I realize my only friend is the truth, even the truth I don't want to see. Like I've had, I hate to say this. I mean, I've had people with severe chronic issues 
like cancer. And they're bad on wheat and dairy. And they basically said, you know what? I'm not going to give up pizza. If it kills me, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I said, well, I, I, I respect that decision. It's probably not the one I would, because I'm not a pizza addict, but probably not the one I right. would make. But at least you know, and you can make a conscious choice. Do you want to eat pizza or not? Yeah. So, you know, again, pretty much all chronic, like pain issues, health issues, emotional issues, if it's chronic, you have a toxicity field blocking your neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, just a couple of examples. I'm, I'm jumping a bit into the physical field. Recently worked with somebody, severe, severe pain. They've had, they're, they're my age, 70-ish, and, and done all kinds of medical procedures for years. And the doctors had, you know, wrote her off as a nutcase, the body workers, and they said her to me, and they said, this is not psychological. She'd done lots of psychology and, and chronic pain work. The anesthesias had never left her body. Mm. Now, think about this. The purpose of an anesthesia is to turn off information. Right. Just because the numbness wore off doesn't mean the information turned back on. Right. And something that's rarely understood, like atrial fib, um, panic attacks, spider bites work like anesthesias. I cleared her anesthesia and she had better pain relief after one, I think it was a 20 minute treatment that she'd had in 40 years. Mm -hmm. Because I was able to show the body what was hidden. And whether that's that you know, very easy physical example, or whether it's the non-physical, if you think you're depressed, but the real issue you need to look at is your own rage and resentment, probably tapping on I feel depressed is going to be very incomplete. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the purpose of it. Let's test through. Is there more than just depression and grief in this? Yeah. And I think that's the difference of what we do that that's it's it, and you said it right, we're very we're very like laser like in our diagnostics and what are the beliefs, emotions, vow agreements. Is there a non physical field blocking this with clarity? And I think that's what we do. It's pretty different. You know, and, and, and inside of that, so like, you know, so someone like me who is using some of your training, but not using the charts, like the way it just looks for me is when I'm working with a client and they're talking about stuff, you know, and again, I love this particular one, because even if I'm on video, I can just have my arm out of sight and you have no clue that I'm muscle testing. And I'm like, is this related to a relationship? Is it mother? Is it father? Is it childhood? Start right. testing for age and stuff like that. And so even though I'm not doing it nearly as structured as you're talking about here, it, I, you know, and for me, like, I'm also in a circumstance where, because, you know, I'm, you know, novice at all of this stuff, when I get a piece of information doing this sort of muscle testing stuff, I don't assume it's true. I assume it's a piece of eyewitness testimony that is worth investigating. And so I'm not putting like, I'm not putting all of my stock into this just because I, you know, again, not super, super skilled at it, but if nothing else, it's giving me a couple of more deeper questions to ask that I might not have asked otherwise. That gives me the ability to investigate in hopefully a way that's allowing us to be more efficient in the work that we're doing. I also think, you know, I've been doing this since 1998. So pretty mm -hmm. much full-time 25 years. You know, sometimes you work with somebody and you just know you don't have the whole enchilada. Mm -hmm. You're missing some information. That's again, we go back in. Am I missing some information for a specific, specific organ gland or tissue? Mm -hmm. And I call those spokes. Am I missing a pathogen, a toxin? Am I missing another emotional trauma, this life or past life? And a lot of times you will. You have a sense of that with experience, mm -hmm. but even early on, if you're tapping away and the clients are making progress, that means you're missing something. Right. Yeah. And, and like, that's, yeah. This, yeah. that's this whole field of, okay, what is it I might be missing and how do I find it? 
Yeah. And for me, you know, the way I always think about it is every round of tapping is just an experiment. And in that experiment, I'm going to get one of three responses. I'm going to get some relief, which means I'm heading in a direction that is useful. I'm going to get an increase in intensity, which means that I'm asking questions that are getting us closer, even if we're not getting a response or there's no change at all. And if there's no change at all, that's the information of, okay, great. I need to figure out another entry point or another tactic because if nothing is moving, then, you know, I'm, you know, it's, it's kind of like putting the wrong key into a lock. It's not going to do any good. I need to figure out what the right entryway is with that particular thing. Well, and you know, one of the things I do, I talked about assembling the field. Mm -hmm. Like like, in, in my example here, you know, the emotional field, the physical field. And then I always test and again, here's the, I do the same test. Yep. I have 100% of all known and unknown spokes. I have 100% all information. And if I get a no, I'm going to go back before we start yep. tapping. Yeah. Am I missing something physical? And it's kind of like one of the things I always ask is if a person has a problem, I like to ask, again, muscle testing, what changed in the train, external physical Okay, that could be polyps. Okay, mm-hmm. external non-physical. That could be demonic spiritual attachments, other people's rays I picked up. Internal physical, yes. Internal non-physical, yes. Okay, so I've got something internal physically. Maybe it's spider bites, but I have an internal non-physical field. Do I have all that information? If no, I go back in. Is this present day? Is this old trauma? What are the, Again, I recirculate. Okay, what are the emotions, the beliefs, the vows, the agreements? If we get the body to see the whole enchilada, it, it'll heal rapidly. And, and inside of all of that, one of the one of the phrases that I have taken from your work, and I would love to hear you talking about this because who knows how just over time me using it, I've just kind of bent it to my own will. Um, but I really love when tapping on stuff using known, unknown, and hidden. Known, unknown, and hidden emotions, memories, right. ingestants, contactants, like just, again, this whole list of things that we can go through. Talk to me a little bit about, I'd love to hear your thoughts on just using those phrases, known, unknown, and hidden, and why that is something that is valuable that helps us to get access to things that we're unaware of when we're doing this sort of work. Well, a lot of times a person knows, okay, I'm angry at this person. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, when I eat this food, I feel bad. Unknown is probably in that unconscious field that the body knows it, but the conscious mind doesn't know it. Mm -hmm. And and I call these curtains. It's kind of like uh, if, if you pull, you know, your curtains across your window, you can't see what's there. Mm hmm. And so the curtain scan, we first developed dealing with anesthesias. Mm. But we now realize you can have physical and non-physical curtains. We have a list of those. Yep. Okay. And so, like I say, you get you get a spider bite, okay, which like acts like an anesthesia. The body, the immune system is made for putting stuff in your mouth and developing. Mm -hmm. That's why bites can be so devastating. Because they're bypassing that. That's in vaccination, same way. The bypass. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Anesthesias. That's not usually oral. But, you know, it's usually injection. Right. So those hide things, and especially if you got a bite, or you got a virus, or a bacteria, or like Lyme's disease through the bite, the body yeah. has never seen that unless you use muscle testing and you show mm-hmm. up to the body. What's, you know, how many bites do we have virus, bacteria, parasites, and then where are those in the body? And then that's what I talk about by, you know, you know really hidden. Yep. And you can pull those out and the body starts a healing response. And so I just, I just love that phrase, just like, like just using it with clients, even in, in a less formalized way than you're talking about here, you know, my... Uh, my favorite moment when working with a client is when there is like this, I can just see them on the video where something is dawning on them for the very, very first time. 
And oftentimes when we're just tapping on known unknown and hidden memories, known unknown hidden emotions, all of a sudden they're kind of like, huh, oh yeah, this probably has nothing to do with it, but, and all of a sudden by just giving the system permission to access in the wacky way that our system does, that little phrase for me has just been a really amazing gift in helping clients even to unlock a little quicker or myself. Like even when I'm tapping on my own, just incorporating that little phrase into what I'm doing, known, unknown, and hidden emotions that I struggle with this particular thing. Oftentimes it moves from the unknown or the hidden into the conscious mind, which then gives me the ability to take the tools that I have and start wrapping my arms around that issue in that particular way. Right. So it's like, it's again, what the body can see, it can heal. If you ask the right series of questions, whether you do muscle testing or not, right. you're opening up new information pathways. And yeah. As we know, truth heals, lies do not. Yeah. So then for someone, so like, th this is a, a super amazing, comprehensive conversation. And we're going to be providing folks with resources that makes it easier for them to dive into all of this. But for someone who's being introduced to this for the very, very first time, and I know transformational folks want to use all the tools all the time with all the bells and whistles. Um, what's the the simplest entry point for someone as they're stepping into using this sort of self muscle testing and remote muscle testing to work with clients. What's the easiest first step for them to start doing? You know, if you go to our website, quantumpaniques.com mm -hmm. in our shopping cart, look up truth techniques and put in the code gene, G E N E. Mm -hmm. You can get a free download. Awesome. So that's a two and a half hour video with me and my ex-wife, Manuel. That's going to teach. That's the most advanced thing on the market today. Awesome. And so we teach 22 different methods. You're, go, you're going to find like, you know, we were talking about this one. You're going to find one yep. that works for you. Yep. But then that's going to launch you. Now, <clears throat> if we have enough people interested, you know, my, my daughter has been training with me for years and, She's probably going to take over the company. You know, I'm getting to be an old gomer, so to speak. And her name is Jamie. So they can email her, jamie at quantumtechniques.com. And uh, if they need additional charts, a lot of charts are in that product. And, you know, as this gets up and rolling, then she may do like a monthly class. Awesome. It would be like a Zoom class where she can answer mm -hmm. those questions and enhance, you know, enhance their skill set. Awesome. That's great. And we will, and, and we'll, and we'll share that in all the follow-up information with everyone. So it's really easy for folks to opt in and get all of the goodness inside of that sort of stuff. But that's, to be honest, that's the best tool I know. And mm -hmm. you know, I, we want to make a difference in people's lives. And so my goal is not to make my clients dependent upon me. I want them to learn the skill set where they can do 90% of the work on their own and then they hit a snag and then they call me. Yep. And that's what I've been doing for 25 years. Well, I mean, and, and as you share all of that, that, that is the reason why whenever I talk about you and your work, I always say, Stephen is who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> um, that I'm just, you know, just the, like the, 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 the trainings that I have received from you over the years have just been so invaluable to me in my own work and working with clients to being more efficient, to being more thoughtful, to being more organized, all of those things. And so just, just, just the way that you think and you're hearing that has just made such a huge difference for me i can't wait for the rest of the community to get an opportunity to play with these tools as well because they're super super awesome well i appreciate that awesome well steven thank you very very much for your time i really appreciate it well, listen i w wish much blessings on you and your family and uh, you guys have a blessed day if you found this interview inspiring, I would encourage you to support the Peaceful Heart Network by going to 24hoursoftapping.com slash support or clicking the link in the description. And you will see on the screen right now a playlist to all of the interviews from this year's and last year's 24 hours of tapping. I hope you enjoy those as well.